the Hammerhead, the first of the large military ships, corvettes, however you want to classify them. In this ship's case, it's referred to as the heavy gun ship, and it does kind of live up to that name. It's got some maneuverability that you'll see later on in the video that certainly lives up to it. Guns, it's, yeah, it's a gun ship. But it is a ship that in the past has had a lot of issues. Does it make a good pirate ship? And in general, does it make a good ship? Now, you can kind of read into that for your own personal desires, but I look at it from the point of view of a pirate. Now, normally when we make this video, we kind of go through the interior. We catalog, of course, some of the issues with the lack of a, uh, the lack of a good airlock design we look at you know so much attention paid to the cafeteria not an armory what's going on this really was the first corvette to get into the game and it does have its problems they are there they are real or they were now, you may not know this but this ship had received an unintended buff and it it went a lot further than above. It kind of proved a lot of the points that we've talked about in a lot of these episodes. When we catalog the problems of the interior of the hammerhead, the lack of storage for guns, weapons, sufficient storage for spacesuits and whatnot. When we got the ship inventory and the personal inventory system, all those problems went away. We could now look at all these slots on the wall and say, oh, you, you could put things in there or oh, there could be stuff in there. And we would always think, well, the developers just got to go through and make it so all the doors and all the closets open and there, there it all is. But that was obviously going to be time consuming. And did we really want to go to that level of granularity? Obviously, there are some fans out there and there are some people who I would categorize as enthusiasts to a certain degree but people who don't really think about the day in and day out of having to use these spaces and all these little things that there are people who are like oh they see it and they're blown away by it but they don't really think about how that's going to impact their gameplay again and again and again you know whereas someone like myself who tends to play games not just merely for a month or <laughs> six months but whose gameplay can sometimes be measured in decades uh, with certain games. I have a little bit more of an understanding of that than I think the average person may un fully comprehend. I know what's redundant and what's stupid and what is really meaningful and immersive. And the one area where Star Citizen excels is the interior design of their starships. This is as immersive as it needs to be. The rest can be filled in by the imagination. And by creating the ship inventory system, eliminating all these problems, eliminating all the need to concentrate on these things, to put effort and poor developers into this, to fix all of these problems, all these shortcomings, you can go on to make other ships and we can just say, hey, you know what? We can see all these little panels that obviously open up We can say, oh, this is stored in here. This is stored in there. But for the sake of convenience, we can just kind of pull things, pull things out in our imagination. We could have contextual ship inventory in the engineering area. You might find ship parts in the captain's cabin. You might find the captain's personal weapons and whatnot. You go into the cap, uh, yeah, the cafeteria. You find food. Engineering. You find ship components. Did I say cafeteria. Uh, we'll just keep going. Um, but you understand what I'm saying. In the barracks, you would find armor and things like that. And so we don't really have to open up every cabinet door. We don't need to go through it at that level. You know, the idea of having to do that was probably something that uh, developers at CIG were probably dreading. And now I think that CIG is going to stick with this and quietly in the future just kind of brush all the other things aside. There may be some outside show and tell things, some clothes hanging in the closet or some guns and some random gun racks. But in the end, it's all just going to be a function of the ship inventory. And that has eliminated a lot of the livability and usability problems with this ship specifically but 
also with a lot of other ships in Star Citizen. I think overall, quietly stepping away from that was probably one of the more brilliant moves that CIG has made. And I hope that they continue with that. I hope that this is like a learning moment for them. But overall, is the hammerhead with all this more or less fixed in one fell swoop, um, is the hammerhead a good solid ship? Yes. You're going to run into some people out there who will, who will say, oh, no, the hammerhead's bad because you can, you can rain death on it from range. That's true. You can. And we can come up with other scenarios where the hammerhead could be overpowered. But at the same time, we can come up or overpowered in the sense that enemies overpowering it. But we can also come up with scenarios where the guns on the hammerhead would shred. We've shown it with the Caterpillar, which just has which has only two size four guns per turret. This has four. Whereas the, uh, the Caterpillar has two turrets, this has six. And this is a much more maneuverable and much more durable framework to hang that firepower on. And it's got great coverage with those guns. The truth of it is, is that the Hammerhead is a really solid combat ship. Improvements to turret mechanics, it's, it's decent. It has really kind of brought the ship to the forefront and really kind of given it the oomph it needs to really show off its potential. Is it a perfect ship? Is it a ship that works in every scenario? No, but that's where your own tactics and your own knowledge of the, of the situation comes into play. Knowing what fights you can win, knowing what fights you can lose. And that's something that a lot of people forget when they're assessing ships, because everyone's looking for the one ship that does everything. It, spoiler alert, it doesn't work that way. What you have to do is find what is the right mix of possibilities and limitations that best agree with your own personal uh, play style. Does the Hammerhead make sense as a pirate ship, as a raiding vessel, as a ship that can clear out smaller defending ships of a convoy yes as a combat vessel directly engaging other ships depends on the ships that it's engaging some will be very resilient against a ship like this others not so much it holds a lot of potential holds a decent amount of cargo as well it's never you're never going to find a single ship that's just perfect at everything right so get away from that idea but what this ship can do for you is it can give you reach into combat scenarios as a pirate that ordinarily you might not have with faster more maneuverable ships and well i mean it is a fairly maneuverable ship itself and it is decently quick there's it opens up a lot of doors and to be perfectly honest, it's one of the it's one of the military combat vessels that I think makes the most sense to be in the hands of pirates because it's a ship that obviously has a long history in the UE Navy. It's a ship that's been around for a while. They've probably sold off a lot of the older ones into private hands, at least I believe that's the lore. And so it would make sense that pirates would through various and nefarious means pick up a few of these ships and repurpose them and i would like to see a pirate edition version of the uh of of the hammerhead do i think that it's a good ship yeah a good pirate ship definitely changes to the inventory system have made have opened up a lot of doors that otherwise it was going to take cig months if not years to work through the old way now just as simple as opening the inventory screen there are limitations there are things to work on with inventory some th changes that need to be made some improvements but overall the one thing that it did is it erased so much of the work that CIG was gonna have to backtrack and do on the hammerhead and that's a good thing that's a win for everybody when it comes to the 
you know, the really high end of the expensive combat ships. I can't say that you should spend your money on this. Because I think that, it, you know, it's one thing for me to spend my own money. It's another thing for me to try to spend your money. But what I would say is this, is that I have a hammerhead through, like it's it's a loner for my Nautilus. If I were to find out that, you know what, the Nautilus isn't going to come out for another five years, which is a, a not unthinkable possibility. Would I be disappointed in just simply flying the hammerhead for the next five years? No. Uh, the hammerhead right now is great. It's solid. It's a ship that I do want to take out and make some videos with in combat in the not too distant future. Because now that we've kind of moved into this era with, with Star Citizen, where we need to think about medical tools and cutting tools, tractor beam tools, all these things, salvage tools in hopefully the not too distant future. We now have a ship that can carry all these things. This ship, unless you are willing to scatter all those tools all over the floor and all the armor and all the stuff and just throw it on the ground, this ship was kind of dead for a lot of those possibilities. And now it's that door is open again. So I would say, honestly, I, I think if you're in a pirate org that has a number of players and you want it, you want to bring something to the battlefield that has a little bit more oomph than a traditional gunship or a fighter or something like that, Cutlass, then it's a solid choice. It is a solid, solid ship. As a single player, we have to wait and see what happens with the NPC mechanics that are going to get implemented in the game. If you can put a bunch of NPCs in these turrets and their firing accuracy is decent and we have basic commands like attack my target and cease fire, I know, tall order, then this could be in a very interesting single player ship as well. And I do strongly suspect that that is a direction that CIG is going to head into, but it's not a guarantee. So it's nothing that I would, I would ever advise another player to spend their money on as and see it as like oh this is definitely gonna happen i am somebody who can take that gamble and i'm willing to take that gamble but i do have to admit it is a gamble so that's why i'm saying that that way to you overall the hammerhead is a ship that has gotten a lot of a lot of strong reviews or a, a lot of positive reviews from players for its combat capabilities but at the same time it's gotten a lot of negative reviews because of its the usability problems of its interior but with the with the addition of the ship inventory system a lot of that has now dropped away and so what we're left with once we got rid of all this granular interacting with every closet and every door system and we've kind of moved on to the magical bag of holding we actually now have a ship that is that the developers don't really need to make any more changes to they don't really need to little tweaks here and there maybe but overall that change to the overall systems and the foundations of star citizen has made this ship really actually reach its potential and so i can't tell you you should buy this ship but if you do you're getting a good ship. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.